Right then. <clears throat> so uh, this is this is running. We've got a new controller board. Uh, running using the original. I've even left the original circuits on there. You can see even there the plug, which is not used. Um, and we're running it from four medical power supplies. I can see. So the total output of these power supplies is rated at 48 volts at four amps. That's 200 watts. It's actually drawing more, as you can see. We're drawing five and a half amps, and the voltage has dropped slightly, 46. You see. So we're actually drawing, you know, somewhere between three and four hundred amps, uh, three hundred four hundred watts, to make it turn, which is the sort of power that I normally expect. Yeah. <clears throat> so, but it runs, you know what I mean? This, this is no surprise. The only thing that would be surprising if, it, if the motor itself wasn't working correctly, which it is. So, the, um, yeah, I can feel it getting slightly warm, but it shouldn't be a big deal. Yeah, so it runs, obviously. So, what I now need to do is tune it up properly. It's not badly tuned but I need to tune it up better. Um, and then we need to go for the high voltage uh, power pack to make sure it runs correctly again. Um, and then, yeah, let's... Uh, but I need to do some more tests, basically, at low voltage, like run it on a battery at low voltage so I can see what it's like spinning up because I have to delicately take it up <coughs> because the amount of juice that it takes it, when it accelerates is way beyond these medical power supplies. So, um, but it's quite handy just simply to do that because then that means I'm current limiting and uh, the current limiting is actually quite good. It's quite useful if something goes wrong, <laughs> obviously. But it's running, so that's good and obviously that works. What I really need to do is, I haven't got all the tracks of these actually re uh, reading back into the, um, into the uh, CPU, uh, specifically temperature. And so I need that to go back. I also need to connect on the um, sensor, which is down this side, into it as well. Um, but it's running, you know. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And um, I, I've got a feeling that I'm going to replace that with... Because this trinary circuit isn't actually being used as trinary. It's just a twinned binary. And I can get that direct from the CPU. The CPU is extremely stable, you know. So I might as well use the facility on the CPU, maybe, uh, to do the junctions, uh, to do the uh, the timing output, you know, to give it a dead zone. But the gate drivers, the gate boards themselves, actually have a built-in dead zone of about a microsecond. <coughs> so you can actually see that happening. Um, this is tuned to give us about a microsecond of dead zone, but it's slightly offset because the... Uh, this is, like I say, this is a trinary circuit and I'm abusing the fact that it can be tuned. Um, so what I really need to do is, is actually use the dual binaries, maybe, or just down tune it so that, that that actually puts out signals which are about half a microsecond apart. And then there's the delay on the gate driver which then gives it, like, you know, a lot more. But this is fine. This is running at one point, well, <clears throat> it's actually running at 15k. Uh, yep. You can see it's running at 15k on the output, uh, the frequency output, um, because I'm using VFD mode. So I started it at 1.3 and then just increased the frequency. Uh, but it's working obviously, and the controller's running at 15k, so you know, there's no reason to suspect it's going to break or anything. Yeah. And I didn't expect that. So this is a good motor, obviously. And I knew that as soon as I tested it. But there you go.